Right, today we're going to be using a combination of circles and various effects to recreate a photorealistic version of the top view of the HomePod that I'm sure you've seen in Apple's publicity shots for this underrated and now unfortunately discontinued hardware. Just in case you're not familiar with it, this is what we're going to be recreating. And when we're done, you're going to be hard pressed to pick out the original in a lineup. I'll be explaining everything we're doing as we go, but if you find anything confusing or have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help. Let's start off by sticking in a Z-Stack. And the first component we need is a base on which this thing can sit to give us a background color. And that's just a circle. Now the default color is going to be black as you can see there, but we're going to make it explicit by filling it with black. We're also going to add a shadow, but we'll add that at the end. The next component is going to be the mesh, which at first glance looks like it's going to be quite complicated, but can actually be recreated quite simply once you figure it out. We're going to offset and rotate 130 circles, and yes, I counted them, and we'll do that in a four each in a Z stack. Four each, going to 130, index in, circle. And this circle is going to have a stroke on it. And the color of that stroke is going to determine the base color of the mesh itself. So once we put the lighting on it, anything that's not lit is going to pick up this color. Stroke border, and the color I'm going to use for this is 0.15 white with a line width of 1.25. Now let's just comment the background out so we can see it. And there you can see our beautiful group of 130 circles, not looking anything like a mesh. So I'm going to shrink these down a bit to a frame of 160. Now I need to offset that so it's butting up right against the edge of the frame. X offset 120. And here's where the fun begins, because we're going to rotate each of these by 2.7692 degrees which happens to be what you get if you divide 360 by 130 circles. Rotate 2.7692 degrees times the index. And lo and behold, we have our mesh. And at this point, we can put in our circle again. Now you can't see it very well, so now we're going to light it. But first, I'm just gonna make sure this says base, and this is our mesh. And the reason I'm commenting these things instead of extracting them is because simply we don't have time. I'm gonna do it all in one view and you can play around with the sorts to your heart's content. So let's talk about this lighting. What we want is for the top of the HomePod to look quite flat and then quickly drop off down the sides. Although you might think a radial gradient is an option here, as you can see in this example, radial gradients tend to give quite harsh boundaries between colors, probably due to the linear interpolation of colors between specified radii. So instead, I'm simply going to use a circle and blur it to give the effect we're looking for. And I'm going to scale it to a value of 0.88. And then for now, I'm just going to fill it with white. And the reason I've chosen white for now is so you can see the effect that this blur is going to give. We're going to make it a lot more subtle in just a minute. We need to blur it with a radius of 15. And because the mesh isn't black, we want to use a screen mode here so it will actually light up the mesh instead of just coloring it, if you like. Blend mode, screen. At this point, it's not really looking very good. And the reason is that we're also highlighting the base and we don't want to do that. We just want to highlight the mesh. The way we do that is by using a mask, and that mask is going to be the mesh itself. I take this mesh up here, and I say that all of that is equal to mesh, and then I'm just going to stick the mesh back where it was, and now I'm going to use the mesh as a mask. Mask, mesh. Now, obviously this is far too bright, but now you can see what's going on. I'm going to change the color to a value of white 0.35. Next is the user interface on top of the HomePod. Group, and the scale I'm going to give to this group is 0.63. The user interface is simply a circle, right? So let's start with that, and we'll fill it with black. And if you take a look at the original here, it has three highlights going around. They're equally spaced, slightly offset anti-clockwise, and this is the perfect use case for an angular gradient. 
Oh, and if you're thinking that the mesh in the original is brighter than ours, you're right, and I'll address that right at the end. And while you might be thinking that we could use gradient stops to define these highlights, we absolutely could, but it would be a lot more work than just putting in an array of colors and let the framework figure out the stops for us. So I'm going to define it like this. Stroke border again. And the reason we're using stroke border here is not the same reason we were using it before. It's not butting up against the edge of the frame, but I don't want these highlights to be escaping our circle. We don't want half of the highlights coloring the mesh. And for the content of this, I'm going to define our angular gradient. Angular gradient, white, black, white, black. You know what's coming, don't you? It's another one. White, black. You have to make the last color the same as the first if you want it to match up. So I'm going to say white. Angle minus 10 degrees. And you should see our highlights. And there they are, a little bit too subtle. So let's increase the line width by saying line width 1.5. And because they are slightly too harsh, I'm just going to put a blur of 1. Blur 1. There are two more elements to this user interface. Firstly, I'm going to comment it and say user interface. And then I'm going to add two more things. Looking again at the original, you can see there is a highlight at the top section of the user interface. So I'm going to add that by using a linear gradient as a fill for another circle. And I'm going to fill that with a linear gradient with the colors white of 0.2. And then I'm going to add two blacks so it occupies the top third of this user interface. And I don't have to use stops again. Once you get into stops, it just becomes a little bit difficult to discern what's going on with the eye. But I can see immediately that if I add a black here and another one, that a third of it is going to be white and it's then going to descend into black. We're going to send that to the bottom. There is one last part of this user interface, and it's my favorite part of this entire design because it is so simple yet so effective. We need to make it look like the mesh is going underneath the user interface. So we need to make a shadow that gives that impression. What I'm going to do is scale up that first circle just slightly, and then I'm going to blur it by five. And as you can see, the effect is dramatic. If I click away, look at that. It really does look like it's getting bunched in there. Now, originally, I could have stopped here, just put a shadow on it and called it a day. And I almost wish I had, because the series circle caused me quite a headache. Now, I know it's a still from an animation, and of course, we're not going to try reproducing that, but we do have to at least try to match this. And I managed to find something that sort of works, but you'll just have to bear with me, because it's not pretty, okay? So underneath this user interface, let's create another group, which is the Siri circle, for want of a better phrase. And the first circle we're going to work with is going to do the inner colors. So let's stick one in. And this one is going to be another angular gradient. Don't laugh, but these are the colors that seem to make it work uh, for me. All right, we've got a blue. We've got another blue. We've got a CG cyan, which is an extension in pure Swift UI. The reason I've given it an opacity of 0.8 was simply because the saturation was too strong for what's coming next. The next color is purple, another purple, and why not another one? Because we want the purple section to be bigger than the rest, and then we're going to stick in another blue, just to tie it off. And this also, has an angle of minus 10 degrees. So that's the gradient we're going to be using. We're going to scale it down to 0 0.17. We're then going to blur it by 10. And as we've blurred it, it's taken away some of the saturation. So I'm going to get that back by adding some. Saturation, 1.4. We're also going to increase the brightness by 0 0.3. Okay, that's more like it. Now, if you did watch the Apple TV remote episode, you might remember me talking about how if you blur a circle that is filled with a gradient, 
then that blur will be restricted to the confines of the circle. As we can see here, it's blurred the contents, but it's not blurring the circle itself, which is what we want. What we can do to solve this is actually quite simple. We just put the whole thing in a drawing group. And as you will see, it's going to escape the circle. Now we have to deal with the colors that you can see there around the edges. And we're going to do that by stroking another circle. Circle. This one is going to have a scale of 0 0.16. And because I'm scaling a circle here, I actually get back a scaled shape, which means I can put a stroke on that. Stroke, angular gradient. And these colors are going to be blue, green, red, and then of course, blue to tie it back. And that's going to be at an angle of minus 10 degrees. We're going to also give it a line width of three. And then we're going to blur it with a radius of six. The colors are now quite desaturated due to the blurring. So we're going to saturate them a bit more, just like we did before. Saturation two. Lastly, we need to make the center of this thing a bit brighter. So we're just going to fake it by putting another circle in there. Just going to give us a bit more room. And then I'm going to scale it to 0 0.075. I'm going to fill it with white. And I'm going to blur it by 12. Next, I'm going to give the whole group a blur of 4, just to tie everything together just a little bit. And you might think we're done, but we're not, because if you look at the original again, you can see that the blur around the edge is too much. This is a bit of a problem because we need that blur to make the colors tie together the way we want them. Fortunately, we have a terrific solution at hand because what we can do is mask this design with a circle that is blurred with a smaller radius than the thing overall. So we just add a mask with a circle in it with a scale of 0 0.22 and we just blur that to 7 and watch. It's just reduced the blurriness at the edge, but we still get the blur that we need in the middle. And here we go, the final part. Yes, it's the shadow. Look at the original there. That is not a Swift UI shadow. That is not something we can just easily do in Swift UI. Actually, I mean, it is easy, but it's not something we can just put a shadow on it and call it a day. We have to think about this because look at it. It's not just a shadow on the whole thing. The shadow is a bit smaller, isn't it? So it sort of sticks out from the bottom. It doesn't go right to the edges. So in order to recreate that, we've got to fake it a bit. There's quite a lot of faking going on here, but what can you do? So let's go up to our base. And rather than just put a shadow on that base, if I do that, watch this. Shadow color, black, just so you can see it. The radius of 10, say. Okay, so that shadow has gone all the way to the edge and you can sort of see it going around the whole thing. If I give it an offset of say 20, you'll see that it goes right up to the border on the left and the right. And that's not what we're looking for. So let's get rid of that. And underneath the base, I'm going to put another circle in. And this circle is going to have a smaller scale than the one that is underneath. And now because we've got a smaller circle, I can put a shadow on that one. Shadow color with a white of 0 0.15. We're going to give it a radius of 10 and we're going to offset it in the Y by 18. And that should give us exactly the result that we're looking for. Finally, let's deal with the brightness of the mesh that I alluded to earlier. And it boils down to the ordering of modifiers. And I'm talking specifically about lines 29 and 30. If I swoop in, and change the order of these two modifiers, the result is perfect. Intuitively, I would think that the order shouldn't make a difference in this case, but as a rule, when using blend modes and masks, I would suggest that you use them after the mask to get consistent results. And I tell you what, while we're here, let's just change the line width of that to two, just to bring out those highlights a little bit more. And there we have it. I really hope you enjoyed that and that maybe you even learned something. I mean, that would be terrific. And if you did, let me know in the comments. I'll be very happy to hear it. And if you did enjoy it and you got anything out of it at all, anything other than wasted time, then uh, smash the like button because it makes me very happy indeed. In fact, let's give it one of these. Yes, do that. And also give it one of these.
So there you go. Subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. If you haven't already, that is. I mean, if you are subscribed, terrific, awesome. Thumbs up all round. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye.